Well, I am off on another grand adventure and you are riding shotgun. And I'm going to Maine for a spring bear hunt, early June. And it's a really cool situation because uh, the only way that you can hunt in Maine in a spring bear hunt is with a native guide on native tribal lands. And uh, that's the only spring bear hunt that Maine has. And I'm really fortunate that uh, I got hooked up with George Sabatis, who's, uh, he lives near Bangor, Maine, but he has uh, a couple of different bear hunting camps on uh, tribal land. And I'm going to go out there and really just check out and see what it's like, I guess. Uh, now, George has been uh, texting me photos of some trail camera pictures of some pretty nice bears. And he said he's got a couple of baits that uh, no one's hunted yet this year and he's got more baits out than he has hunters and his hunters have been so he said he's only had one guy that didn't get his bear so far this year and it was because he was just uh, being selective and had multiple opportunities but didn't find the bear that he wanted but uh, so this is a hunt that's a lot different than normal because I'm going to be flying to Maine um, that's pretty unusual for me I think this is only maybe the third time out of a lot of bear hunts that I've done where I'm actually flying um, to a hunt and I got a layover in Chicago, but so I'm leaving at uh, 8 15 From Minneapolis, which means I got to leave home about 4 a.m. And uh, then I end up uh, landing in Bangor at, at about uh, 3 o'clock p.m. Well, I won't start hunting till the next day, but I'm gonna blog this uh, there'll be probably not a, not a large number of logs, but maybe like uh, two or three in addition to this one so I'm packing here. I got my hard case um, that I use to fly and I'll be checking some baggage because of course I got all my camera equipment and everything like that. It just makes it a lot more challenging to try to get everything there um, when you're filming these hunts and everything. But I'm pretty excited about it and uh, really I've been talking to George on the phone quite a bit and uh, he seems like a really nice guy with a good setup and a, a good camp and so um, just getting things together here today to get ready to take off and and leave in the morning and uh, So in a few days, I'll start putting the videos together and should be good. I'm taking a couple trail cameras and I sent a bunch of Northwoods bear products to George already so he's been using that and Like most everybody that uses it. He's fallen in love with that gold rush and he'll probably be using that more so um, I'm pretty excited about it. Now when I pack this, I end up, instead of just the bow in here, I end up packing stuff around it like trail cameras and, and uh, even sometimes some clothing and stuff like that that will help it, uh, you know, protect the bow. But also, I take so much stuff that uh, it, it, it's nice to have a bow case that's big enough that I can pack stuff in around the bow and so forth. Huntworth sent me this new backpack. Um, they started, they're, they're a clothing company, but they just started coming out with uh, other accessories too. And they sent me this backpack and I, and I got to looking it over. They wanted me to evaluate it and there's some things I really like about it. And so I'm going to go ahead and use this on this trip. And I got to transfer all my stuff from my other backpack, but it's got a lot of things that I like about it, including a, uh, a rain fly that zips into the bottom here. And, uh, of course, you know I like this pattern, this camouflage pattern. So I hope you enjoy the vlog. It's coming up here in a few days. And um, hopefully I'll get a really big main bear. Now I'm going to bring the skin back. And George has a, a guy there that really likes to eat bear meat. He said if you're interested in donating your meat instead of spending the money to fly it back or ship it back to Minnesota, then that guy would be really happy to have it. And so I guess I'm going to wait till fall to get bear meat. Um, I normally have one in the spring and one in the fall, but I got a little bit of bear meat left in the freezer from last year, but not very much. So I'm going to donate the meat and uh, ship the skin back. So stay tuned. Be sure you subscribe if you're not a subscriber already. And if you hit that little bell and you get notifications every time I upload a video, and that way you won't miss any. So hope you enjoy it. I'm in a motel in central Maine. A long day. I uh, left Minneapolis early this morning, had a layover in Chicago, um, landed in Bangor, Maine at 3 o'clock, and there was supposed to be a cab pick me up 
the uh, all-in cab company do not use this cab company if you're ever in Maine and here's why because they left me sitting there standing there outside the airport for two hours in 93 degree heat and um, they were supposed to pick me up at three and they didn't come and didn't come and didn't come I kept trying to call them all I got was the answer machine finally I was communicating back and forth also with George whenever he had cell service and they finally said I guess we're just not going to be able to get him so after two hours of um, standing outside in 93 degrees at the airport he called a different cab company which come and got me and hauled me up here and um, so I'm in this motel I don't know how long I'm going to be here for uh, at least for tonight and then probably uh, I'm going to go out to a different camp but I might I might be here for two nights so I haven't met George yet but uh, should be able to meet him here um, after dark he's got another hunter in the woods I think right now and and he told me he's been out baiting in this heat so pretty crazy that uh, it's this hot and I'm of course not going to be able to hunt tonight but I don't really care because I don't feel like sitting in a tree stand when it's 90 some degrees and supposed to be a little bit cooler tomorrow it's only supposed to be a high of 90 and then it's supposed to get better throughout the week so I'm in the motel here sorting and organizing my stuff and and uh, you know putting stuff in my backpack and so forth getting ready and um, then uh, we'll see what tonight and tomorrow brings who knows I might might be able to haul a bear out of the woods for for uh, one of the other hunters and uh, we'll touch base with you after a little bit and we'll see tomorrow I'm gonna start hunting so I'm pretty I'm really ready to hunt um, man I've had a really really busy couple of weeks in Minnesota running a fishing tournament that I do each year and um, it's a fundraising fishing tournament for Teen Challenge and it's a ton of work that I do all year long and that finally took place um, Saturday so here it is Monday and uh, I'm in the woods in Maine and I'm just really really ready to be sitting in a tree stand listening to the birds chirp and waiting on a bear so we'll talk to you in a little while pastries and trail mix is what we're getting ready to go today how many baits are we gonna cover George nine nine baits Wow nine on this side and there's seven on the other territory where we, where we have a remote camp up and by Springfield. And we're probably going to the remote camp tomorrow, huh? Yes. Okay. And it is hot. 90 degrees again today. This will be the third day that it's been 90. Yeah, we're not seeing many bears, but it's supposed to break tomorrow and then cool off for the, later in the week. It's going to be in the low 40s in the in the evening that's good mid 60s the low 70s in the evening uh, in the afternoon okay. Like it's been hit, yes. been worked. It's been hit, and three nights ago he shot at a bear out of, on it yeah. on the site and uh, missed it. Missed it, and it came back by the looks of it. Things are brand new to me here. 
First of all, I don't think I've ever sat in a tree stand when it's 93 degrees before. Secondly, I don't think I've ever been in a beech tree before and uh, I'm in a beech tree here in Maine. 20 yards from a bait with pastries and trail mix, which is something I'm really accustomed to and a lot of outfitters aren't willing to spend the money on uh, pastries and trail mix, but, uh, but George is not afraid to uh, put the money into bringing the bears in. And it's been really slow here. I mean, the reality is it's the third day in the 90s in a row, and like they're just not seeing bears. They, the two guys that are in the motel room beside me, George's other two clients in this area, then neither one of them saw a bear last night. So, I don't know, but they decided not even to hunt tonight. They just went fishing. But I came here to hunt, and I'm going to hunt. So he tells me that there's six different bears on camera on this bait, including one really big one, a sow with two cubs, and then two other middle-sized bears. So tomorrow we're going out to a more remote camp. Um, so I guess I'm not really sure how bad I really want to shoot a bear tonight. I'm kind of interested in going out to this other camp and it's on the side of a lake and wall tents and all that. It looks like a lot of fun and cool place. So I don't really know if I want to end my hunt, but man, if a really big one comes, you know, what do you say? So we spent the day putting out baits and uh, we baited quite a few baits uh, in this area it actually looks a lot like minnesota or wisconsin or michigan with uh, you know a lot of pine and fir and uh, spruce and cedar and a few birch trees and oak once in a while but the beech trees are the only thing that's different just don't have them in the midwest the bugs are bad in this heat so fortunately i got a thermocell mm -hmm. And it's 3 o'clock and uh, gets dark after 9, so it's going to be a long sit here. But um, George said, can I put you in the stand pretty early today because his son's graduating. And I'm like, well, <laughs> your son's graduation is pretty important. I think you ought to be there, so you better put me in the stand early and get to your son's graduation. So, so we put Northwood's uh, Bear Products Beaver Caster on here. And... Uh, he used gold rush on it earlier, and we'll see with these uh, six bears that are here if any of them show up tonight. So we had a fun day. It's, it's always good to get in the woods and run bear baits, even when we're sweating like crazy. I drank. I'm on my third quart of Gatorade here. But we're going to relax and sit back and uh, see how it goes for the evening. Thanks for coming along with me. Flies are bad. Well, I survived that uh, that sit yesterday. That first four, four and a half hours was, ranks right up there with some of the toughest times I've ever been in the tree stand. Even like really cold weather when your toes are aching and everything like that. It was just really tough. And unfortunately, I didn't see a single bear um, when uh, George came to pick me up. He had trail camera pictures. Uh, he pulled the card and. Uh, Sure enough, the night before there was a bear there, it's a medium sized one at uh, 8.30, but I didn't see anything. And as far as I know, nobody else uh, at the remote camp saw a bear either. I guess we'll find out today. But uh, we're headed out there. It's a nice uh, camp um, on a lake, and uh, it's all run by a generator and everything like that. And it should be kind of fun to get back out farther into the bush. So. We'll see you uh, tomorrow and have more information about that camp as we move in out there. And, and we're going to keep plugging away here. Thanks for following along.
Smells good, doesn't it? Yeah. I like it. They have, they have, uh, you get those at Walmart for seven dollars, fifty cents. The gallon sprayers, half gallon sprayers are four dollars, and uh, the two gallon are twelve. starting to get darker in down in here as the uh, sun has gone behind the trees this last four and a half hours has been brutal man I didn't bring enough water in Gatorade but it's getting to the point now where I kind of feel like we're it's actually to the point where it feels like a bear could come so we got about two hours left Well, I'm back where we parked the four-wheelers, and uh, there's a bunch of barrels of bait and stuff like that here, trailers and stuff, where they kind of stash things. So, I actually had an encounter with a bear tonight that I didn't see at, at last light. Uh, shooting The legal shooting time was like 8.52, I think, was the end of legal shooting time, and I pulled my bow off the hanger at 8.54 and noticed uh, that I could just still barely see my sight pin. And then uh, off to my right, I heard a, uh, a noise. The bears will make a, they kind of clack their teeth together. And most of you guys have bear hunted much, you've heard it. The, the, I heard that clack, clack. And so I knew there was a bear there, probably 20 yards away or so, but it was too dark to see it. And uh, I could hear the four-wheeler coming. And as uh, he came over a little rise about 50 yards away to, from my tree to pick me up, uh, it sounded like the bear kind of shuffled off so apparently there was a bear coming in right after legal shooting light uh, one guy shot a bear out at the remote camp tonight and then uh, one of the guys out here said that he heard a gunshot and we got three of the guys three guys hunt abdon jody and tracy are hunting out here and i can't remember which one he said heard the gunshot but um so uh, apparently one of the guys shot or um, there is some homes on the other side of a lake back in here a couple miles I guess and could be that somebody was doing something back in there but anyway I guess we'll see if, if uh, we got a bear here in a few minutes uh, um, one is uh, one's back at the motel and then we'll see what these guys did when they get out and I got a while to wait here because uh, they're 45 minutes or so back in there and if they're dragging a bear out it could be quite a long wait so I'm gonna get in one of these cars or trucks here and uh, get out of the bugs Okay, I'm drinking Moxie soda. Now Bob assures me this stuff's not for everyone. Pretty, pretty stout, he says. Ninety percent of the people don't like it. Well, we'll see if I'm in the ten percent or the ninety percent. <laughs> it's really strong. Holy cow! It's like a super strong root beer kind of it's almost a, like a root beer but it's just got a lot more bite to it right I don't know it's like loud I think is the way I'd put it wow 
Wow. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see if I finish the bottle or not. I don't know. We decided that it's a combination of cola and root beer and mothballs. Yeah, we got about an hour and a half of daylight left here. and The sun's just hitting the tops of the trees. This evening just has a totally different feel to it. The birds are chirping, squirrels and chipmunks are bopping all over the place. It just feels right. Temperature's probably dropped into the mid 70s right now. It's really comfortable and it is go time. Come on, bears. So just beer and water in there. And yep. Beer and water. I don't even know how to eat those clams like that. I guess huh? we'll, we'll, we'll cheat. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it's easy. I don't even use butter with them. That's yeah. a good taste. Yeah. yeah. They're good with butter. They're good with both. I think the butter is simmering in them, the, the steam, because I can taste the buttery. Oh. Like, really? Stuff. Mm. Huh, just the clam that tastes like? No, just the juke uh, beer I put in. Oh, okay. Oh, three cans of Coors. There's shed, they shed. Well, what a difference a day makes. Uh, today it is uh, in the low 60s for a high and we got a strong west wind and I'm moved out to the remote camp and it's really cool out here, really nice. Uh, way out in the middle of nowhere and we're on a lake so I'll hopefully be able to do a little bit of fishing. And uh, so we ended up putting a ladder stand together to bring out here and uh, hauled it all the way out here about an hour and a half and put it up and um, I checked the trail camera that was on the bait that I'm going to be hunting tonight and there was uh, several days of a sow with a cub, a yearling cub and then uh, a big boar moved in and he looks like uh, that sow is starting to smell pretty good to him and so yesterday he went over to the camera and gave it a swat or a bite or something uh, yesterday morning and so I didn't get any pictures from last night or this morning but uh, there's been bears on this bait both morning and evening and this is a really nice boar so I'm feeling really excited about that and uh, uh, one of these guys there's two other guys in the camp from West Virginia father and son and uh, uh, they shot a small bear last night and we're hoping that uh, the activity really picks up here and it should get a lot better because this weather's so much better right now. Um, but anyway, I've had a fun time here and uh, it, this is really a cool spot and there's a lot of activity today, squirrels and birds and, and everything and uh, so it just has the feel of the kind of a day where the bears will be on the move and maybe tonight it'll happen. Uh, it's you know, you just have to keep plugging away at it. We've had really, really difficult conditions and weather and uh, just haven't had even a close call yet, but tonight could be the night. degrees colder than it was two nights ago when I got in the stand. It's like 64 right now. And I'm at the remote camp. We put a stand up here. Uh, this is a bait that he just put out on Sunday. This is Thursday. And uh, it had a sow with a yearling cub on it and then another bear. I got to really, since we talked last, I got to really looking through the pictures and analyzing them. There's actually a different bear that's uh, probably maybe like a three-year-old. I can't tell if it's a sow or a boar. They're really hard to tell when they're young like that. Um, but there's multiple bears on this bait. And then that boar that's with the sow now is heck of a bear. Really nice male bear. And it's a very unique spot down in here. A lot of fir and spruce trees, a lot of boulders, 
and just really rough back in here. And uh, man, I I have really really good confidence in this spot right now, so I'm really hoping for the best. And um, it's cool, so it's very comfortable. And uh, the mosquitoes are horrible, though. I just get a little thermosel, so hopefully that'll get to work in here pretty quick. But um, we got a long sit tonight, about uh, whatever 3:30 to 9 is. I guess five and a half hours. I can very distinctly hear a bear back over here, popping his jaws. He started over here, and he's working his way that way, popping his, clacking his teeth. I don't want him to go that way downwind of me. I need him to come the other way. Well, obviously that didn't work out the way I had hoped. That bear apparently circled downwind of me and uh, never did come in, so I didn't see any bears last night. So here we are, day four, and man, has this been a hunt of extremes. It's another cool day. We went from 90 degrees every day to 60 degrees every day, and uh, I think the bears are just freaked out. So I'm hunting in Maine for bear, and tomorrow night we're going to have lobster and clams. Lobster and clams on a bear hunt. It needs work. My accent needs work. Millinocket. Chance of showers. Penob's got Benoit. Larry Benoit, Lanny Benoit. There are times when I look at some footage and I go, I really don't want to put this on YouTube. But, you know, I think one of the things that has grown my channel is that I just be real. And, uh,. It, that means that when I'm successful, you guys all get to share that with me. And uh, when I screw it up, well, uh, you get to see that too. So I'm going to go ahead and post this. And uh, when you get all the way to the end of this, you'll fully understand what I'm talking about. Well, obviously that didn't work out the way I had hoped. That bear apparently circled downwind of me and uh, never did come in. So I didn't see any bears last night. So. Here we are, day four, and man, has this been a hunt of extremes. It's another cool day. We went from 90 degrees every day to 60 degrees every day, and uh, I think the bears are just freaked out. Well, the only thing that likes this is the mosquitoes. They're unbearable, and so uh, without a thermocell, things are pretty brutal. Um, so I thought I would stop out here before I finish driving on in to uh, where I'm going to park about 100 yards from the bait and uh, just mention a couple things. First of all, um, I'm wearing my rain gear because it's clouded up and there's some dark looking clouds around and also it's just cold enough that the extra layer um, is going to help me be more comfortable. Unfortunately, I did not, I checked the camera here this morning and I did not get uh, that big male with the female on camera again, but we did have another shooter bear on the bait um, at six o'clock this morning and uh, yeah I I don't know if if I don't see the bear tonight I might try to hunt this in the morning it's really difficult to hunt in the mornings because the it's just really hard to get in there without spooking the bears and then if you do they're just not coming back so um, we'll see what happens here tonight there's several bears on this bait and uh, we checked uh, uh, three other baits today and baited them and uh, they were all hit so the bears are moving again after the heat left and so I'm gonna go sneak in there and uh, get in the stand and uh, so 
just hope for the best, I guess. You know, we got multiple bears on this bait, and it's just a matter of time before one comes in while I'm there. Hopefully that's tonight, because I am running out of time. All right, I'm settled in the stand here. I got pretty warm walking in here. But uh, it's cool, and I got chilled last night, so I'm glad that I brought extra clothes tonight. So the wind is perfect right now if it'll stay right where it is that'd be awesome the mosquitoes i mean it you can't hardly get the thermocell lit and going fast enough it's really mosquitoes really something but so we're in for a long haul here a five hour sit but tonight could be the night i just uh, called my son and had him get me a ticket to fly out Sunday morning this is Friday night so I'm, I'm running out of time here and um, if you didn't know my one of my sons is an airline pilot and so I get a discount on flights but he has to purchase them <clears throat> at the parent rate so um, I have him buy the tickets for me and I just had him buy a ticket to get me here and then I told him I'd let him know when I need to leave and so I gotta leave Sunday morning one way or another and hopefully it's with a filled bear tag so you know it's a long sit but it's one of the things that I enjoy about bear hunting over bait is being in the woods and just watching the critters and listening to the birds and just uh, relaxing it's something that we all need and especially I have pretty stressful periods in my life and I'm just coming off of one of them where it's very very stressful so it's really really good to be in the woods to have him at the bait for distraction and confidence.
so dark. I get I was watching a small one the whole time and then all of a sudden it started looking bigger to me and it was sitting up there. just sit up there and look at the bait. And I'm like, man, it, it looks bigger when it's sitting there like that. And then it started moving towards the bait. I'm like, that's a different bear. That's actually a little bit bigger bear. So it came in and it's like literally two minutes left of legal shooting light. Well, I don't know if I got camera light enough to see it or not, but I, uh, I think it made a good shot on it. I got the pin on it. It was... That's got to be the least I've ever shot a bear. I mean, it was literally... Yeah, legal shooting light is over by one minute right now, so it was probably one minute before the end of legal shooting light. Well, we've definitely got good blood on the arrow. buried in the ground but it's got it's got good blood Let's see if we can figure out where he went I couldn't really tell which direction he went I think that's the, that's the track right there. Plowing right over this stuff here. Cheaper, there should be more blood on this. All right, seven o'clock the following morning here, and I'm in here with Bob. Uh, George and Abden are on their way up here. They're probably going to be here in about an hour. And uh, you, the barrel has not been tipped over or hit. So we're going to see if we can find some blood. And uh, we really, really analyzed the footage pretty good. And it looked like um, the hit was a little bit high. Hopefully we got both uh, lungs. But we're just going to scope things out and see what we can find. Uh, it kind of sounded about where we're at now, up in this area, about where I'm at. So I got a little turned around out here looking for this bear. Um, just can't believe I didn't take a GPS coordinate of the tree stand, which I always do. But for some reason I didn't this time. So um, I started hollering for Bob and he can't hear very well and I um, didn't answer. So I thought, well, there's a road just probably less than a quarter mile away, the road we came in on. I'll just get my GPS out, find that road, walk out to the road. So 
as you can see, I crossed that road and there's no road. So I guess I'm going to have to go back to where I turned the GPS on and uh, see if I can work my way back to the stand. I'm really kicking myself for not marking the stand on my GPS. I just always do that and for some reason I forgot. But uh, all right. Yeah, I just really have no idea where I'm at right now. I've, I haven't had this happen to me since I was a kid, so stay tuned, I guess. You gotta be kidding me. You turned around right there, buddy. Seriously, I walked within I walked within 15 yards of that thing. Congratulations. He's not the one you thought you shot. Oh my gosh. No, he's not. Okay. <laughs> you got one anyway. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> Talk about ground shrinkage. <laughs> uh, shoot. Jeez. Congratulations. You turned around right over there. There's not a drop of blood the whole way. Thank you, man. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for coming. <laughs> Jeez. I walked a mile. We went yeah, that's a half mile up that way and onto the road. And that's maybe 100 pounds tops. Smoked it, though. That's a, nothing wrong with that shot. No. Okay. They so said they barely bleed. Actually, that that's incredible. If I didn't have a taxidermy, that's like a, a size I would like to have done. Yeah, that's a rug. Those yep. are. Yep. What's that? Yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> Just a fresh set of eyes sometimes. All right. Uh. uh I'm kind of in a state of shock right now because we've been looking for two and a half hours and we had literally walked right past this bear. And uh, so it's not the bear that I thought I shot. Uh, there was a bigger bear and I thought it was the bigger one that came to the bait right at last light. And I guess that's a good lesson for me to, you know, I thought uh, I, there was two bears and one of them was quite a bit bigger than this and I thought I shot the bigger one, but hey, I, I'll... I'll just say that the smaller ones are they're harder to hit you know <laughs> yes there, there's a there's a guy that George knows that's going to be pretty happy to have the meat and uh, a, and uh, we'll donate the uh, hide also because I got to fly out tomorrow but I had a ball here uh, we had horrible conditions and George still put me on the bear and, and uh, um, I'll show you a, a short video here if uh, Abden can get me a video of his bear last night. I'll, I'll put that on here so you can see that too. But uh, man, we got turned around out here. We were looking for a long time and uh, George come out here and walked right to it in the first 10 minutes. So I guess it pays to have an Indian guide, huh? That's right. <laughs> Sniff them out. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Just really met some cool people and uh, had lobster and clams and <laughs> shot a bear. <laughs> and Moxie. And what? And Moxie. And Mox had Moxie, yeah. <laughs> you got you all gotta to come to Maine to have Moxie. So Alright, we're heading for the truck. The skitter's on the way. <laughs> George is a big man. Well I'm back in Bangor, uh, waiting for a tomorrow morning flight. I'm in a motel. Uh, I got a cab called for five thirty in the morning to get to the airport in time for a fairly early flight and I'll get home tomorrow afternoon. My wife's picking me up at the Minneapolis airport. So I thought I'd just take a couple of minutes here real briefly to break down um, this hunt and uh, a couple of things that I think you'd be interested in. First of all, um, I really learned to like George. Um, you know, he's really ambitious and works hard and uh, it, he was faced with really, really tough conditions. I mean, this is the most extreme conditions I've ever hunted in where literally it was I mean sweat running off my face the first two days and shivering the third day and then uh, the fourth night I put on my rain gear just so I could cover up enough to keep warm on stand. So the bear movement reflected that they just were not cooperating there was a little bit at night and uh, but, but you know the hunters just weren't shooting bears. It's, it's really extremely tough conditions. So it's also the smallest bear I've ever shot. And uh, 
it's a male bear, but it was uh, last year's cub, so it's like a year and a half old bear. I'm, it was pretty shocking when I walked up to it because that's not the bear that I thought that I shot. And just to help you understand a little bit, you know, I've bear hunted a lot, and you'd think a guy wouldn't make that mistake. But, you know, what happens when I see a bear that I want to shoot, I just become really super laser focused. And I, I call it predator mode, where I just kind of go into this super hyper focus where I'm um, doing everything that's necessary to kill that animal. Because that little bear had been around me back and forth and circled around multiple times, and then he had left. And then a bigger bear had come and had sat up on uh, an area up there about 60 yards away and watched the bait right before the last minutes of shooting light. You know, I'm like, okay, that's a bear that I would shoot. And I think it was a bear that I had on camera at about uh, 6 o'clock that morning. Um, so when that bear disappeared from that spot, I thought, okay, he's coming to the bait, and within a couple of minutes, and as shooting light is ticking down, less than five minutes of legal shooting light left, and then the bear stepped out at the barrel, and you, there's no way you would have convinced me that it was a smaller bear that had come and had come back. You know, I just waited for a broadside shot, took the shot, turns out the shot was perfect, the bear went less than 50 yards and, uh, and piled up. Um, but I shot the wrong bear and laser focused kind of predator mode that I call it I've always considered it a real asset, but in this case um, it was not and uh, So I have to kind of reanalyze that I'll get a bear this fall have plenty of bear meat this fall and and uh, So I shot the smallest bear I've ever shot in Idaho and then I topped that with an even smaller one in Maine this year so um, I, I've got to get this turned around, I guess. But uh, anyway, that was my 37th bear, and uh, I, had, I really enjoyed this hunt and um, learned to really like George. And I, I hope he succeeds in in doing this. Uh, it's a unique hunt on native land, and you got to have a native guide. Probably will try to do this again, and probably try to get a bigger bear next time, and hopefully have better. Uh, environmental conditions to hunt in. So anyway, just want to thank you for following along on this and thank you so much for being a part of this channel and helping me do what I do by being a subscriber. So uh, it really helps me if you leave a comment and if you hit the like button and uh, we'll see you on the next video.